Welcome friends to Baba Beck website, a YouTuber, millionaire with 17,000 subscribers, 1.7 million views and thousands of likes. Well, hello there YouTube. This is Baba Beck. This video is all about a rare, ultra rare Lincoln scent that I found a few years back. And um, I have a habit of whenever I find these weed scents that I bounce them on the table to hear the chime and it drop like a piece of, I can't, I, I, there's no metal sound at all. So I asked my associate working with me, are my ears working just right? You know, that is this some kind of dream or something? All weed scents, you know, they have this, this peculiar higher pitch sound. And um, my associate said, no, I hear a piece of hard candy or Tums dropped, uh, you know, as I did the drop test for him. Now, I kept this scent. I didn't have a chance. I kept it in a safety deposit box for two years. Today, I pulled it out, and I'm going to work this scent. This video is also about my music that I sang and played all instruments years and years ago when I was younger. And I hope you would enjoy that, too. And my science fiction novel. I'm a writer, science fiction writer as well. So please share and like. I thank you for all the subscribes to my channel. I did a little bit of math on this uh, penny as well. I'm going to show you some sites that are showing that, you know, how uh, U.S. Mint did experimentation in that era for the uh, Lincoln scent to make them out of different materials. So I hope you check it out. And thank you for all the shares and likes and subscribes to my channel. This is Baba Beck saying, God bless America. Let me ask you, do you like rare Lincoln scents? Worth a lot of money? Treasure hunting penny rolls from the bank at home? Do you like 80s pop rock bands? Do you love God in your life? Spirituality? Miracles? Do you like original comedy? Do you like to read books? Sci-fi novels? Thrillers? Books that should be made into movies? If you said yes to any one of these questions, please, Click the link below and kindly share, like, and subscribe to Baba Beck YouTube channel. God bless America.
Well, hello there. Welcome to the Bubba Beck channel. I'm a singer, a musician, an artist, a one-man band, a Lincoln Sand treasure hunter, science fiction writer, and comedian. Hey friends, I'm doing the sound test, the drop test, for authenticating as much as I can here. Um, I wish I had the machines, you know, that cost like a thousand dollars or something to um, check what this penny is made out of, what kind of fiber or, or rubber or something that they made this scent out of. This is the experimental scent right here, the one I took pictures of. This is it right there, see? Just do this is the one. This is a regular scent right here. This is a regular 1940 scent. Now I'm gonna do the drop test for you. This is what a wheat scent would sound like normally. See, I'm trying to let's see. And I keep bouncing away, but okay, there's you, you can hear the, the metal, right? A little bit. Something. Now look at this. This is this is the same scent. But it's made out of look it. No sound. Look it. Look at that that deadening sound right there. It's like I'm dropping plastic. Look. Again, I'm doing the other one now. You see it? I'm gonna try a little bit. Look it. <clears throat> this is the experimental scent. And I had a hard surface. I don't have a hard surface here, but it did you the exact exact thing look I'm hearing nothing look this is a, I'm reversing it back to the metal the one that has had the metal sound see Yeah, that was a good sound right there. Metal sound. Now look at this. This is the experimental scent. Made out of some kind of resin, fibers, God knows what. Authentication for you.
Oh, oh, oh.
Adventures in the Ear of the Giant by Alexander Beck Book 1 This work is dedicated to all my children, friends, and beloveds, the ever-living angels within me. I thank members of the DC Metropolitan Police Department for reading the work and giving feedback. Thank you, Sergeant Luke, Officer Brian Denny, Charlie and Morrison, and friends serving the H Street Northeast overnights in Washington, DC. What is sown is perishable. What is raised is imperishable. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown a physical body. It is raised a spiritual body. If there is a physical body, there is also a spiritual body. Contents 1. The Forbidden Zone 2. The Dig 3. Wasberg 4. The Wild 5. The Museum 6. David 7. Pompey 8. The Emperor 9. The Search 10. The Cave 11. The Meeting 12. The Desert 13. Fear 14. Supreme Being 15. Galileo Preface Sire, is this what you're looking for? What is it, Doctor? If I can remember correctly, this is a self-sustained recording mechanism, but of course, a considerably late model. Did Soil the Elder keep a very personal diary? How amusing, how absolutely daring of him. If it worries you, sire, we can destroy it in the laboratory immediately. No, that won't be necessary. You have the proper machine to play it back on? My lord, but there could be matters that are private to the late elder. 
Dr. Edgebro, if he wanted to keep it hidden, the elders would not have sent me lengthy memorandums begging me to exhume his rotting body from the tomb two years after it all ended. Forgive me, sire. I had no idea. I am taking this device back through time. The time machine is yet an experimental model, sire. What about the aging reversal theory? Or aging forward could be dangerous, sire. Life is one significant risk, doctor. A battle within a battle. May I ask what year? Somewhere in time. Somewhere around 2017. They were civilized to my knowledge. The United States of America, the continent, would be your best bet. Are you psychic? No. It was a good guess then. Prelude The magnanimous starship Galileo cruised the spellbinding wefts of space. In the command module, Captain Brent Fletcher viewed the latest transmission from Earth. It was short and blunt. Attempt no emergency landings on Earth. No explanation was given, but a short video followed clearly showing the chaos on the streets. Then the warning repeated itself, snowflaking as it faded. 300 light years away, the stealth shuttles bombarded the front lines. The fearless Argonaut android soldiers kept firing lasers till their metal flesh turned molten red. Pompey rudely laughed sitting on his jeweled electronic throne. Miles away, the young emperor Hattus II gazed through an infrared scope at the inferno of successfully accomplished bombing missions by the Saluki rebels. Back in the city of the Holy Circle, Hundreds sat around the sanctified holy circle on the hard checkered marble floor. In their beating hearts, a newborn fear. Since the mysterious arrival of the entity a month ago, the temples in the surrounding neighborhoods had been coined abandoned. In the hope of a prayer without the pestilent questions and torment from the entity, many rushed to enter the sacred boundaries of the Holy Circle. The entity had started a ruthless conversion process, forming a rudimentary cult, a religion, where it was God. Here and few other holy sites and city of Atlantis are the only places one is protected from the tainted shadows of the entity. Amongst the crowd, Ishmael tensed his tall, muscular body thinking about his wife. Three days ago, she was killed by the entity in a massacre at a local temple. Tears bubbled down his shady black eyes and dribbled down his bronze cheekbones. In a corner of the temple stood the elders, grouped up, wearing long decorative tunics, listening to the recital of holy books. Ishmael wiped the tears of sorrow and hate from his bloodshot, angry eyes. In his heart, he demanded justice. 
he had fought bravely on 22 battlegrounds against the persistent and highly mechanized army of the Argonaut androids. In the Saluki army, he was a recognized commando. The high-ranking journals knew he had surpassed the requirements of the Academy of Science, a place where everyone went to awaken the sleeping hemispheres of the human brain. He closed his eyes. He took an oath in his heart to bring an end to the devastation caused by the entity, a beast that could laughingly withstand tremendous firepower aimed at his alien armorized skin. Even the, the Badu technique hesitatingly tried by the elders to overturn the beast into itself had unpleasantly failed, butchering the lives of three prominent elders, now martyrs in the eyes of the beholders. Ismail has already welcomed the desperate invitation by the Emperor's Council to lead the team sanctioned by Emperor Khatus II. He had nothing more to live for but to devote all his energy for the cause burning in his heart, a crusade. He knew the elders had given a name to the entity, Giant. Chapter 1 from the excerpts of Soil the Elder, a powerful demonic entity has taken possession of our most valuable resource, religion. The source of it is still unknown to us. Much is being done by the unfledged Emperor Hattus II. Still, the entity ravages the planet Earth. Beware of the creature known to us as the giant. He was in the Forbidden Zone. He had finally achieved what he sought. The mental stigma and risk to his life was over. A ray of happiness and pride flooded his tired mind, knowing that he had come to reality. He felt alone. He opened his eyes in the sceptral red darkness and noticed the vial laying outside the circle he had drawn around himself. He unlocked his legs from the yoga position and gingerly picked up the vial. He examined it. He felt assured that the creature was his prisoner, jailed securely in the vial. He stood up feeling his head spinning. He realized he had not eaten or drank anything in seven days. He began to move slowly. He did not know where to. His sense of direction was jarred momentarily. He only wished to find the barrier and skillfully transform out of the wall. Samuel Kruger did not do this feat to excite his friends. He did it for the thrill of it, something to break the boredom of building human robots, one of his favorite evocations. But it had gone down the drain like an old book 
he had read countless times. Maybe I can trust my mother with my newfound secret, he thought. No, no tale telling till I can train the alien beast to be my loyal servant. Till I can confide in him. Maybe I should consult the elders. Samuel Kruger's father had passed away when he was sucking his thumb. To fill the generation gap, he had taken up different type of thinking. A life built on logic, mathematics, religion. He was good enough to be mistaken as an android. The vril wind noise of the bustling color full clouds gave him a correct sense of direction. Moments later, he faced the wall, the invincible wall built by the supreme being to house the jinns. Creatures of the night, many had died trying what Samuel had accomplished in seven straining days. He had tried to forget the horrific mental trip as it never happened. But vivid images of terror continued to cast chilling spells in his articulate brain. He would never do it again, he told himself repeatedly. Under any circumstances, traveling in the fifth dimension was a risky adventure. He wished never to see this clandestine world again. He faced the barrier at 50 yards. Samuel enacted the transformation cycle. He had prepared himself for this act, in theory, numerous times. The entry was not at all difficult. But to come out of it, no one had ever made it back. His life in the hands of his creative intelligence. He held the treasure, Garpurth, in his right hand. He hoped someday, when he is emotionally ready, that the creature might bring him good luck in his wild ambition to rule the planet, the known worlds. He had planned to bury the creature on the other side of the barrier, somewhere in the vast desert where no one will ever find it, even in dreams of grand illusions. He forced his mental powers to excel within him, closed his eyes and concentrated. If his experimental flight failed, he knew he would die dreadfully, suffocating, swimming, hundreds of miles per hour in the thick, colorful clouds. A small tornado began to steam up on the other side of the barrier. He struggled to break through the web of the barrier, the rushing clouds. He saw the moments of his life pass before his eyes like a film fast forwarded. The Academy. Sabrina, his strict mother, his whole life in abrupt sequences, then finally the test tube. His two split parts struggled with each other to attach to his real self. He felt the reins of the fabric, the magical, natural fabric of the barrier, ease the tension he was going through to break free. Like drops of rain descending in a calm lake, 
Layers upon layers of his body glued themselves together, making him complete. He lay unconscious in the fervid sand. His head reeled from the effect of transforming under depleted body and soul energy. The black tunic he wore had become a wet rag from dried up sweat. He felt a crawling sensation over his exposed left arm. His numb brain signaled a poisonous threat about to be injected into the bloodstream. He managed to open his eyes and they collided with two tiny little red eyes and a tail raised stiff with a deadly potion. His pupils dilated with fear, knowing that the death mark would be on his face. A short notice of death. With sudden reflexivity, he cupped a handful of hot sand in his right hand, closed his eyes firmly and threw it hard on his face, twirling his body away at the same moment. Within seconds, it felt like a terrible fantasy to him that never happened. He took a breath of relief. After falling three times, he managed to keep his balance. He felt weak, but his mission was not over yet. He told himself he must find a suitable place to bury his newfound friend, creature, treasure, at least away from any prospecting of Argonauts or even Saluki rebels or what of the nomads who seem to regard the wall of the forbidden zone as some sort of a shrine. He looked up at the beaming sun, determined the direction to his home and began to pace towards it steadily. He had no choice but to stagger the miles in the blundering sands. Any further travel through the power of transformation was out of the question. His mental energies were used up. The desert heat made scarlet blisters on his skin. His vision became a series of unfocused mirages in the evaporating air. In his desert-ridden mind, he thought, what will they do if I told them about it? The Emperor, Wasberg, my much admirable teacher. Never. I must not tell. He stumbled across the desert looking around with sun-soaked eyes as if someone was watching him, wanting to steal the creature in the wild that he held tightly in his right hand. Accustomed to seeing through the sand-sweeping desert, the leader of the nomads saw Samuel more than a mile away as a flickering dot. He unfolded his turban and halted the caravan of eleven camels, women and children. At first, the leader thought he might be lost. Then what he always thought upon an unexpected encounter in the deep desert. Another adventurer from the mainlands looking for God Almighty. What a fool! Only a damn fool would jeopardize his life in the deep desert without a camel. But the leader was experienced in the traps and deceptions of the far-reaching Argonauts, and he decided not to risk the entire lives of the caravan. On many such instances, the Argonauts had taken the nomads prisoner and tortured their women to get tactical information. 
that the poor souls did not have. The caravan marched on, destined for another campsite near the sea. Blood ebbed through the sandals Samuel wore. The pain began to play a paramount role in his bodily system. He knew how to control it, sheer pain, and use the pain to overdrive his elapsing body to his final goal. He imagined himself as a paladin who must win the game, rule the world, a world filled with people he hated, like the emperor who was too young to snatch the throne from his father. His father did die fighting the Argonauts, but why him? Why not someone from the dynasty, he thought, clenching his teeth. He shoveled with his bare hands. A new acute pain emerged from the tips of his fingers and traveled to the reception centers of his brain. Droplets of sweat ran down his forehead, stinging his very eyes, tickling his mouth and blistered, swollen lips. The trembling hands continue to make the hole deeper, wider. For a moment he stopped, exhausted, to look at the size and depth of the hole. No, I must do better than that, much better. Sandstorms could uncover it, he babbled to himself. Seconds seemed like hours when he finally stopped his shaking, trembling hands from digging any further. His hands were half-baked. He took the while and placed it neatly in the hole. Before covering the sand piled around the hole, he admired the treasure he had risked so much for. To get within reach of having a chance to capture it, he had to enter the world where many only joked about going, but never did go even if their sanity was working to a lesser degree. He looked back time to time as if the beast could escape on its own and tear him to pieces. He assured himself that the only way out for the creature was from spiritual words that he only knew, perhaps one elder. Unless, of course, if someone broke open the wild. He quickened his pace and prayed that the sun settled itself. Gruesome hours later, Samuel was within sight of his home, a home made of mud and tamarack stood before him. Most of the dwelling were underground to protect the inhabitants against Argonaut air raids. He gently knocked on the door, surrounded by overhanging plant life. Sabrina, his mother, opened the door with a surprised, frozen look on her gentle, fair, ladylike face. Exhausted, he fell into her arms. The abrupt pounding of bombs dropped several miles away, woke up Samuel Kruger from his comatose state of sleep. The ground shook and tremors released dust particles through the canvassed walls of the underground room. He felt an itching in his right arm. He had been nurtured back to health intravenously. He reached for the remote control that breathed life into his lovely androids and pressed a button pointing it towards the walk-in closet. Angelica opened her doll-like green eyes. She stood next to 
two other female robots, one had a face missing and the other without an abdominal plate to cover the exposed circuitry. The tanned plastic flesh wearing a pink negligee moved out of the closet and closed the door. She smiled at him, reflecting her long, sultry blonde hair. She adjusted her shapely body in a seductive fashion coming towards him. You have been away for a long time, she spoke as she sat down on the bedside. He gave her another command through the remote control and she spoke the same sentence in a softer female tonality. You have been away for a long time, Master. Yes, Angelica. He replied, caressing her arms and back. How was it? She asked. Something I should forget. He replied. Why? She asked. You would not understand. He looked away for a moment. And why not? She asked. Because you don't know about the Forbidden Zone. You need further programming to comprehend. He rolled her over into an embrace. She returned his gestures with a subroutine full of kisses. Off, voiced Angelica, and the bright incandescent lamp floating above them turned off. He closed his eyes, holding his favorite creation. He let his mind drift into darkness and dreams. Washington DC Welcome to the Bubba Beck Show Star date March 2018 We are expecting a little bit of rain some clouds 
in a bit of lightning. The President of the United States of the Americans is still none other than Donald the Duck. We have short jokes, long jokes, historical jokes. A musical guest, Bubba Beck, entertaining you with various genres of music and some spiritual enlightenment as well. So sit back and relax and let the show begin. Sex counselor had an appointment with a couple, and the questions were put forth. She said, He does not do for me what I do for him. Please let him understand it's not the way. I'd love to be this way for our seven year old marriage to last another day. Counselor, let's be more specific. Is it sexual in nature? And the female said, Yes. Counselor, that's a big wide area. Can you narrow it down a bit more? And they said, I eat bananas, he wants a corn peach. Counselor, I have a solution. Why don't you both eat a fruit salad before sex? people love debt, don't we all? And at the moment, we are one trillion dollars in debt and climbing. How did we get there? Well, some of the ways are that we like to consume things from other nations. We don't like American goods. Uh, you want to buy a Mercedes-Benz from Germany, you want to buy Swiss chocolates, you want to buy clothing made from other nations. 
So we give our dollars to other countries, give our jobs to other countries. Why pay American workers? Why pay uh, America itself? And, of course, as credit card, we are called the credit card nation. We love to live on assumption that I can buy this $250,000 house, even though I don't have it. That is probably one of the biggest ways we put ourselves in debt. We borrowed the money. We put that small down payment down, and we borrowed the rest of the money and to pay it off. So this is how we are putting ourselves in debt. And how do we get out of debt? We need to have some regulations and some change of consumption behavior as well. Again, our la 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 likes. And this likes need to change. We need to bring about this change within from us as American people. And we also need to change the population as we are multiplying as a nation. In other words, the rich, you know, have kids and the poor. Well, they're having kids too, and that's not going to work. In other words, the, the people who are on welfare. They are multiplying like uh, nothing ever happened. And, and the percentage of the American people are paying them, feeding them, clothing them, sheltering them. It's putting a load on the entire economy. So we need to have some kind of criteria like the Chinese do. It's sooner or later. We gotta, if you want to fix this, unless you just love debt. And we are at the moment... One trillion dollars in welfare every year. That's what we pay. One trillion dollars. A congressman said unsustainable. So do the math on this, American people, as I leave you with this thought about we love debt. This is your president saying, have a good evening. A man went to the local zoo and asked at the ticket booth, what type of entertainment do you have? The lady answered, well, we have lawyers and doctors and artists and painters. The man said, any comedians, possibly? The lady said, oh yes, we have that cage as well. And are you here for enrollment or just for entertainment? The man said, enrollment, please. Lady said, it's uh, $300 a week, $1,000 a month. We are running a special for the first week is free. If you make money, it's 50-50. Three of our comedians are running their own major network specials overseas. We are open 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year. And also, there are no refunds. The man said, I'll pay for a month in advance. She took him and locked him up in the comedian's cage. Friends, there's a man seated on a stage looking at a live audience. And a lion walks by him on the stage and he says, Oh my God, a lion. And I'm afraid of dogs. Friends, this is a true story that I would like to share with the millions of fans out there or Bubba Beck. This happened about 10 plus years ago in Kissimmee, Florida. And uh, I uh, used to come home from work and bring a lot of you know, food with me and I used to entertain some friends that are four-legged with furs and they go meow, 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 meow. And uh, you know, most of the crowd that used to gather there was uh, the female sex 
and it's, it's just nice, you know, but once in a while, I used to get a, a male also show up, and uh, I didn't mind, you know what I mean? I really didn't mind much at all, except that uh, the male, you know, handsome, and white with, the, you know, the little checkers and, and all that, and... Uh, he would devour most of the food. I had to push him away once in a while. You know, you get these nibbles, you know, on your on your uh, hand, saying, "Well, thanks for you know, petting me, but no thanks," you know, kind of thing. And uh, I didn't mind. It, this 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 just went on for you know days and days and days, and um, I put up with it. I, I just put up with it. I said, well, look, maybe he's just protecting the female clan, you know. And uh, I just decided to let him have it. You know, weeks go by, you just let it go. And you keep pushing him, pushing the, the male cat away. And uh, young, you know, young male, very handsome and pretty, and didn't mind, you know, most of the time. Sometimes I just pick him up and kind of, you know, push him away, a, a long ways away. But uh, he'd come right back. And, uh, it, you know, it, it kind of builds up inside of you to say, you know, and this time I was just, this, this one instance, I was just like, uh, I can't handle this anymore. I just can't do it. I want, there's more females, and this is the one male. He's a pretty good fella, you know what I mean? In good size, and young, but in good size, we've got an appetite for food. And I... I want the females to enjoy, you know, I mean, I put the dry food, you know, up for, for but he wants to, he knows where the, the gooey stuff, the good, good stuff is, and he would go for it, and, um, it's, I mean, he's got an appetite that he could eat 10 cats worth of food, so, I got youngsters, you know, they're, I, it's not fair for the rest of the clan, you know what I mean, this is just not fair, I, I just can't do it, I can't do it anymore, so, I decided to just, you know, kick some ass, you know, and uh, and he knew. I guess he knew this day was dawning on this cat, and um, I chased the cat. This is broad day. I mean, you know, this is evening. You still got light. You can, you know, it's just kind of glimmering into the evening, but you got light. You can see everything, right? I chased this cat. I ran, and I'm gonna. I want to just, you know, you know, kick some ass, and uh, at least just once, right in the rear, but, I'm, and, you know, cats can run, so I'm running right behind this cat, through the houses, into their backyards, and suddenly I see that this cat, believe it or not, this, this is, this is, you know, this is the uh, absolute truth before you that the cat yes that cat is digging the hole with his paws now I for one you know you guys all know what this means yeah. I had no choice but to uh, as I watched the cat squat you know into the hole I just had no choice but to uh, turn my back yes I turn my back on this cat that I'm about to kick its ass because these are just basics of you know it's just the humane thing to do it it's not humane it's just I had to turn my back it's I'm not for one for Exactly. I, can't, I just couldn't do it I believe me I can't do it I turn my back and I knew by that time, yes, it, it had, you know, made its way out, out there. So this is a true story that you may choose to share with somebody that you love very much. That, uh, yes, in, in times of, you know, I mean, can you imagine this? I don't know how to, how to say it, but I... I felt so 
defeated, you know, by this cat, that I I could have just gone up, but I just could because it was digging the hole in the ground, and I for one know why cats dig, dig a hole. Yeah, it's about to take a nice, healthy, you know what I mean? And I just could not see myself being party to, um, you know, that type of an affair. I couldn't be, you know, God being the witness out there watching everything. It's one thing to tackle something, you know, face to face, but uh, I just couldn't do it. Anyway. That's the true story about the cat. Story number one about the cat. Hello, this is Baba Beck, 
live on YouTube from Washington, D.C. That's Baba, B-A, B-A, Baba Beck. The song is called With Your Love. This artist is your discovery. You made this artist a star with your love. Thank you very much for listening to the song. Uh, I appreciate your vote purchase of my album on bandcamp.com under Baba Beck. And um, I appreciate very much. Please follow. Please follow me on Twitter and like me on Facebook. And this is Baba Beck saying uh, Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year to y'all. God bless.